The most amusing spiritual individuals are very often also the most disturbed, the most weird, the most out there. They're the most devout, the wo those who don't really have their feet on the ground. They live a weird life, a weird existence. And yeah, sometimes I mock them because of their peculiarity, because they're so far out there, so disconnected from reality. They use as an example to say, hey, don't be like this person. This person has real mental health issues. You don't want to be like them. They're not dealing with their issues. They're hiding them in spirituality or perhaps even conspiracy theories. And you know what? I think that's fair. I think it's fair to say that you should not be like the radical example. You should not be like the extreme religious person or the extreme spiritual person who basically insulates themselves to keep themselves within their beliefs. So they protect themselves from the outside world, protect themselves from skepticism, criticism, from cynicism even. And uh, yeah, if they're happy doing that, that's their right. But when they come on the internet and start shooting off their mouth and making remarkable claims about the nature of the universe or the nature of their critics, I think it's fair to say, well, no, nah, I think you're wrong, love. You know, I think you're wrong, mate. I think you're wrong there. I think it's fair to do that. I think it's fair because a lot of people out there, they don't like you basically penetrating their echo chamber. And if you manage to get a few words in there and they don't like that, maybe it'll make them think twice. Maybe they'll look at their, their ideas, their thoughts, things that they believe that they accept wholeheartedly and go, hang on, this isn't quite right. I thought this was genuine, real stuff. I thought I thought this was the bee's knees. I thought this stuff really worked. And in actuality, um, eh, no, that doesn't work. 